feels like forever now. Little Mix have been running the roost in the girl group world, uh, taking charge, being in charge of the girl groups, because it doesn't really seem like there's anyone else you can point to and go, yeah, they're about as big as Little Mix, particularly in the UK anyway. Although we are starting to see a huge dominance of K-pop, so I feel as though you could look at acts like Luna, Twice, and many others and say they're much bigger than Little Mix now. But I think from a UK-centric level, like perspective, um, it's interesting because with boy bands, you can usually go, there's like this band, there's this band, there's this band, there's, there's, a, there's a whole bunch of bands at the same time, all kind of competing. Even when they're not competing, the industry will try and make it look like they're in competition with each other, even when they're not. And I can point to eras where there's been multiple boy bands at once, you know, NSYNC Backstreet Boys is quite an obvious one. But then even later, in like the late 2000s, 2010s, you've got JLS, and then you had The Wanted, and then you have obviously One Direction, and then you had after that Five Seconds of Summer, and a whole bunch of other acts that you could point to and kind of were around at a similar time. Um, but like, there's just been Little Mix. <laughs> that, that, that's it for the girl groups. And in the 2000s, it was pretty much just Girls Aloud. And with that being said, you'd expect the weird dynamic of there only being one at a time to make the one act that's huge stand out in a particular way and make you go, yeah, I get it. They've got some great songs. They've got amazing songs and I can see why they're as big as they are. But with Little Mix, I can only really think of like one, maybe two songs that are really good and uh, everything else uh, that they put out, I, 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 I'm just, I, I just don't get it. Like, I, I just, I just, I just don't, I just don't see the hype. And I know this video will probably get a minor flood, uh, a pond-sized flood, if you will, of <laughs> Little Mix fans in the comments telling me I'm, I'm, I'm straight, I'm a straight man. I have no opinion here. My opinion is invalid. But uh, before you type that out, like, I'm happy with a Girls Aloud compilation CD. If you put on, like, their greatest hits, I'd bop along. Sugar Babes, mate, they had some big bangers, but um, I can admit that and that's not really an issue, but Little Mix just don't really have that. If you stuck on a Little Mix song, it'll be like, shout out to my ex, you really cried the best, and it's instantly going off. And this new album here doesn't seem to be catching as the same amount of hype really as they usually do. I don't think there's been a huge smash hit from this one, which is strange because all of the albums have had that. Uh, but even like listening through the track list, I just still am uh, lost for words really. I don't really get the hype once again. There are definitely positives though. I think the first two tracks are actually really quite good. Like they're enjoyable pop songs. Uh, they've got a dance pop flair to them. Holiday uh, has that vocal little bit that reminds me of Break My Heart by Dua Lipa. I feel like a lot of artists are trying to go in the direction she did this year with Future Nostalgia because it did so well. And, um, you know, Dua Lipa is kind of setting the tone for that kind of genre at the moment. Breakup song, for as cliche as it is with the lyrics, is pretty good as well. Like, the chorus is quite anthemic. And it kind of shows that when they harmonize, uh, they can sound really quite good together. It's not very often though. I don't think they're like particularly strong vocalists, but I guess tracks like this do show that they, you know, do sound good together and can put together a catchy pop track, nice melodies with the vocals, all that kind of stuff. But even with that, like there's not a huge amount of distinctness to the vocals. Like if you separated every member um, I don't know if there'd be that much about them that really stands out. And that's probably why they were put together in the way that they were from the X Factor, because as individuals, they're not strong vocalists. Like, there is no standout singer in this group. It's actually hard to pick them out of a lineup either, like, to differentiate each vocalist from this group. I couldn't even tell you who's who. It's usually a distinctness or a character to each vocalist within like boy bands and girl bands. You had it with the Spice Girls, uh, even going as far back to the Supremes, man. Diana Ross stood out, like she stood out. You, you, she had a great voice and she was clearly the obvious one that you could think of when you think of the Supremes. Destiny's Child, or even have to name drop them. Whereas Little Mix, 
they just all kind of blend together and sound like generic singers like there's not really a huge amount of personality coming out of their voices and then when you read into the lyrics it makes it worse because there's so little in the way of like creativity with what they sing about they're just hitting us with standard topics that you've heard time and time and time again tracks like nothing but my feelings you know what that's about before i even have to describe it but like it's just so ugh, listening to the way that they describe how they're feeling and stuff and it's just nah. Happiness is one of the worst examples though, like if this is meant to be empowering then there really truly is no hope. How is this empowering? I was searching for happiness, I was using you to fill up my loneliness is sung so passionately <laughs> on the chorus. You're just gonna admit to everyone that you're a trashy person? Like, come on, man. Like, that's just not something you want to brag about. You're using someone to fill up your loneliness? God, have some, have some respect, man. They sign it off with, I found the love in me. Oh, okay, it's a, it's a, it's a self-love anthem. Yay, yay, self-love. Let's just use someone to fill up my loneliness. But it's okay because I found the love in me, yay. It just irks me, man, because teen girls are looking to this as like an inspirational message. But like, if this is the message, you do not really want to be taking inspiration from a song like this. But don't worry though, they don't make pop songs like everyone else, as they tell us on Not A Pop Song, um, which is kind of ironic because the things that they say on this song that the song isn't, are also songs on this album. You know, they say that this isn't about love, breakups, all that kind of stuff. But the album has songs about love and breakups. It, the lack of self-awareness, man, it, it cracks me up. But apparently this song is actually more of an attack on Psycho Records. Um, there's a Simon Says line, which I'm thinking is pretty obviously a dig. <laughs> at Simon Cowell, but I've heard so many different things over the years about Psycho Records and all the different members that have cut ties with Psycho. I could imagine it being a pretty terrible label. I mean, it's birthed out of X Factor, and X Factor is essentially a show about, you know, creating a pop star um, through the industry. That's very much like, no, you have to make songs like this. They have to be like this in order for you to get popular and make us money. I've never liked The X Factor at all for many reasons, aside from <laughs> the very funny audition tapes that come through. And uh, there's many classics you can find on YouTube of those, but just the general way that they try and, you know, control, they're, they're, they're kind of like using artists as they, you know, they're, they're puppets. And it's like they're dancing to their tune and they have to do songs in the way that they want them. I can see why they left Psycho Records. There's so many stories and cases of how bad it is. But the actual general lyrics of the song just don't make sense because they're saying that they don't make these songs and they're not going to make a song like this. But it, it's not ironic or self-aware because like I say, there are songs on the album that are like this. A mess on this album is exactly what they were describing on the song. So it's like, you are making songs about this. Um, my love won't let you down. These are the songs that you're saying that you won't write. Which to me shows once again, the lack of creativity with the lyrics because they repeat similar themes throughout. There's not really any variation, honestly, in the way they talk about these themes. My Love Won't Let Me Down is just really the most basic cliche, you know, type of song you could imagine in this theme. It's just painfully derivative. I'd say the production across this album isn't particularly all that interesting, generally. Um, the track Breathe, the closing track, actually, it just has like this sparse emptiness to the, to the beat and you just kind of like focus more on the vocals. It's like they've really like mixed the vocals as high as they can just to make them the center and front, like the front and center of the track. But like the instrument itself just has like nothing to it. The track Sweet Melody is one of the most confusing structures, I think, on the whole thing, where like the whole doesn't really fit like the rest of the track. Like, like that part and the verses are so odd. And then when you get to the chorus, it's a, like a completely different song. It shifts in this weird tone that um, I can't quite 
understand where they were coming up with this idea. It's a shame as well because the chorus is pretty good, but like everything else about the song is just not with it at all. The song Gloves Up is this like epic percussive heavy anthem that's really like, you know, ooh, <laughs> but there isn't really like vocals carrying it, honestly. Um, it sounds like something Sia would make, but you don't have Sia on the track to carry the song with her fantastic vocals. You've just got the kind of like shoutiness that Little Mix often do on their tracks. It's like they're essentially raising their voices to reach the notes, but they're not really uh, singing in a particularly impressive way, so it just doesn't really end up working for me. And I guess there's not much else to say, like, I just don't think this is really all that impressive, honestly. Even like the catchy pop songs uh, aren't really particularly that great. Um, the first two tracks are good, but like after that, I'm just not really following what they're trying to do. I'm just not really with it. I wouldn't even call it bad either. It's not a particularly bad album. There are some tracks I thought were pretty bad, but overall I'm just left meh. Like there's just very little here that stands out. And yeah, just, not a huge amount to take away from it. I guess I gotta go five out of 10, just very middle of the road, quite derivative, doesn't really leave much of an impression on me. But you know, that's not to say it's bad. I, I think there are aspects of this album that people could really like, but uh, I don't know, I'm just waiting for something to pop with Little Mix and nothing really ever quite does. A few good songs here and there, but that's about it for me. Um, thank you for watching this review though. Hopefully you enjoyed it. Hopefully you got something out of it. Let me know your thoughts in the comments. Try and be constructive. Don't just tell me that I should quit YouTube because, you know, am I going to do that? Probably not. Let me know what you think. Thank you for watching this review. Subscribe if you haven't already. Have a good day and uh, goodbye. Goodbye.